Oh boy, oh boy, what do you got? You got something awful in your mouth. Oh jeez. I don't want you in this video at all. <laughs> but you want me in the video, don't you? Hi everybody, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas with Eco the Eco Watchdog, who's off chomping on some hideous piece of glarf she found. Uh, and nobody else, just me and the West Texas wind, which will come up from time to time. Hey, I've got a um, vlog for the end of August here, and also the beginning of a project I hadn't planned on doing, but now is critical to our life out here. Yes, critical. So what am I doing? Well, well, we've been here ten and a half years now, and I've been working on the place ten and a half years, and a lot of things have happened, and that's what this the opening of this is going to be about, since it seems that most of the people that are watching my vlogs uh, are people that have kind of followed our progress. So let me spend a few minutes watching her chase goats and talking about what we're doing right now. What I'm doing right now here is this frame behind me that I'm about to put together is going to be the form for the new power room. Now we've had a power room. I did a video about it where it was really put together well. I happen to have had a um, uh, a bit of money at that time and I bought amp meters and 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 I had it really set up nice too much and I just really long story short didn't really do it quite right uh, now we have to build a new power room because we are uh, one of the changes we made was we were going to have an outdoor kitchen where the kitchen is now and the house was going to be a lot bigger with a second kitchen an indoor regular kitchen inside my um uh, i got in those accidents that that didn't really cripple me but slowed me down a little bit so we shrunk the size of the house the outdoor kitchen is now going to become the kitchen which means we have to finish it put walls up and put a roof on it right now the roof is the solar panels and the solar panels don't face the right way they face oh kind of a west southwesterly direction more west I think than anything which is good for the afternoon sun but it's lousy for the morning sun and we get up in the morning a lot uh, we actually need the power both in the morning and in the evening we'll get into that in a bit but it doesn't face the right way and the angle is off it's at five degrees instead of uh, 31 and a half degrees and now and this is why we're doing this video right now now it's very critical that I do something, anything, because my forklift batteries have all died. I'm on the last one, and I've been able to get, I was running on only half of it, and I was able to get the other half to give us some power, but now that whole battery is only giving us roughly eight hours of storage. That's it. So it's got to be replaced, and it's got to be replaced soon, because it's going to go down, 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 pretty soon we won't have a battery at all. Now that's not the end of the world. A lot of people out there are and could be living with no batteries, just solar panels or a single battery in a solar panel. You need kind of a capacitor, so you do need a battery, something to kind of um, hold a little bit of power instead of having it come straight through. You can run it through a charge controller. And if I don't get this thing, this project done in time, we may very well have to turn off most of the power at night except the two or three critical things and uh, actually run on just our solar panels. But here comes the wind. But the thing is, the batteries are the critical thing, or a new battery is the critical thing to us right now. But with the new battery, I might as well get into everything. I might as well move the solar panels. I might as well da 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 da. Now, I'd said uh, a while ago we were going to do a gravity battery. I explained what a gravity battery was. I'll step a little closer. And um, then I said, I'm not going to do a gravity battery. We're going to go to 48 volt power. Anyway, we had to do a lot of thinking, a lot of looking at money, because money is a driving factor for me. And now, unfortunately, for so many of you, with the economy crashing due to the COVID-19 virus, a lot of you are in the same boat. With money, you know, I felt I felt like I was almost a lone ranger for quite a while. Um, we only have, we have no savings, and we only have what money comes in each month from Social Security. That's all we have. And most of you were better off than that, at least. 
until this crisis hit. Now we have to be careful with the money we have and try to stretch it out. And I know you guys are struggling. I'm realizing a lot now from the COVID virus that we hadn't realized up until now. So um, my heart is with you as we all um, as we all pull together to get through this and uh, do the things that we need to do to get through this very, very real virus and be very glad that it isn't something that's as contagious or as bad as the bubonic plague was back in the 14th century. Anyhow, what I have to do now is I have to buy a new battery. That's critical, and that's money that I don't have, so I'm trying to put that money together. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask anybody for a donation. You folks have been wonderful and donated to get us this far. We'll get this somehow. Luckily, we have the campground bringing in extra money, and that money we're going to save up. But we do have to get one battery. We're going to run a one-battery system here because what killed our other batteries, our forklift batteries, was the fact that I had money and bought four of them. They were full when we got them. Once they got down in power, they never came all the way back up to full, and that is one of the fastest ways to kill a battery is to never fully recharge it. So we're going to, uh, we're going to run a 12-volt battery. A big one that will run the power down during the day and charge up or during the night rather and charge up fully during the day we're also going to run all that power through a charge controller or in this case three charge controllers we're not doing that right now we haven't had to and that's a story that we don't need to get into but we haven't been using a charge controller I've got an excellent I've got two excellent ones I need to buy a third one in time we're going to run the power straight through a charge controller so that battery is always ch fully charged. But the battery, so we're going to move the battery, we're going to move the charge controllers, we're going to move the combiners, we're going to move the solar panels and everything out here. This will be an 8 foot by 8 foot building. It does not need to be any bigger. We're going to have the entrance right behind me here so I can back the truck right up. I'm going to put a permanently mount a block and tack, not a I'll permanently mount a beam that will hold my block and tackle and be able to pick the battery up. So when I back the truck up here, pick it up with the block and tackle, pull the truck out, lay it down, move it until I position it correctly. Run all my wiring and everything permanently, professionally, done correctly. We're also, um, I'm also going to have to move my DC generator just in case. You always have to have out here triple redundancy. The DC generator is my first redundancy. This third, it's my second redundancy. Third redundancy is the truck itself that plugs into the whole system. If we're in an emergency, at least the, the truck can power the house. So I had to have a way to bring the truck in here. We'll put the entrance right here. It's what we're working on now. I have to run an underground cable all the way to the house to where, and that underground cable will run the 110 volt power Two lines, so we'll have 220 volts in the main house, underground to the existing panel. Luckily, I don't have to move the existing electrical panel because it's just like at your house. The panel's there, run the wires in from the grid, or in my case, my grid. I can run them above ground or underground. I'm going to go underground with them. Run it right through there. So everything will hook up to what we have. It's a matter of creating this space right here. So. 8 by 8 by 9.5 feet tall, or 10 feet tall is where I'm going to start out. It'll be 10 feet tall, it'll end up around 9.5 by the time we get the beams in. 8 by 10, this, this building will face directly at 200 degrees from due north. That's your optimal positioning for stationary solar panels. 200 degrees from due north and whatever your latitude is from the horizon. So if you're down at the equator, you're going to have them like this. If you're up in um, Edmonton, Alberta, you're going to have them like this. And if you're here at 31.5 degrees uh, latitude, you're going to be about like this. That's where it is. So 31 and a half degrees from the horizon at 200 degrees due north. That's where the panels go. But wait! What if you need power in the early morning? What if you need power as the sun sets? So although we're going to build a stationary system using 40, um, I believe it says it's 44 solar panels. That's all I need. I have more, but I'm going to run 44. I'm going to put most of the panels facing 200 degrees. 
I'm going to put a small bank facing almost due east and a small bank facing almost due west. So when the sun comes up, the east ones will pick up some power. As the sun comes around, all three will get some, some sun with the main uh, body getting a lot of sun, getting as much power as we need. Then as we get closer to sunset, which is where we really have most, most of our um, power draws in the evening, we're going to get sun, uh, uh, power gain rather, until the sun actually goes down. Now over my shoulder, I think you can see in the distance that ridge of mountains. It comes out and then to Mesa, and then it dips down and touches, well, the rest of the ground. Right there is where the sun sets on uh, the 21st of June, the longest day. Now you can't see where I'm pointing here, but notice how far that arc goes, way over to here. That's the 21st of December where it sets. So you can tell this positioning is going to be optimal. So the project we're working on now is going to be getting my footing set up to pour concrete. We're just going to pour a concrete footing. We're just going to pour concrete where the battery sits. The battery itself will sit on a plastic pallet, but I'm going to put a concrete pad under it. Then this that was supposed to have been a dehydrator, when I put it here 11 years ago, I've never said, God, I wish I had a dehydrator, so I'm not going to build it. If after I don't need it after 11 years, I don't need it now. We're going to repurpose this little area here to put the DC generator in so that it's essentially soundproof from the campers. The campers are only 200 feet in that direction, and that DC generator, I've got it shielded some now, but we're going to shield it with masonry, drive that sound straight up so hopefully they won't hear much of it anymore. Then, when I'm ready to do the gravity battery, my slope for the gravity battery, the sharpest part of the slope, is right off in this direction here, so I can build the gravity battery right here. Again, right access to the um, batteries, the inverters, and everything. So I think we're all set to go. It'll be a permanent installation, it'll be a real nice, neat installation, and it'll be an installation done at the lowest possible cost. But that being said, the lowest possible cost is still going to be in the neighborhood of $4,500 for everything. That's a lot of money, but that's the heart of your whole system, is your battery, um, your inverters, your charge controller, which charge controller is not that expensive, but those three things are the heart of your system. That's where the bulk of your money goes. You can start off, if you didn't have the money, I could start off with one charge controller and manually turn the panels on and off depending on whether it's cloudy or not and build from there. That's how we started our system initially. We had four panels and four smaller, I say smaller, they were about that big, AGM um, uh, deep cycle batteries. We had those and we just literally you know, turned, the, uh, turned the panels on and off as needed. We're still turning panels on and off, but that's because Debbie and I are here all day long and we can monitor the system. Otherwise, we'd have to be running it through the charge controller. They don't seem to make a charge controller that can handle all the amperage at 44, 135 volt um, watt, watt, 135 watt solar panels put out. So I'm going to have to use three of the bigger, and I deal with Coleman Air, three of the bigger Coleman Air um, charge controllers. I have one big one. I have one that's equally as big but a different model than um, but they're perfectly compatible for the system and I'll have to buy a third big one down the road uh, and that's how you have to do it you have to build your system as you can afford it so you don't look at it and say oh my god I gotta put twenty two thousand dollars into this solar system I don't have twenty two grand but you got a grand and you can start there and every month, Debbie and I added a solar panel or two or something. We added something every month. Then when I was injured and on workman's compensation, I would get quarterly big checks. I didn't depend on those checks. I put them right back into this system. That's how we built it. We would have built the system with my money if, if I hadn't been hurt. But we used to sort of work with compensation money. So right now, I'm going to start getting this squared up and leveled and dig out my form and go from there. And I'll see if I have anything else to tell you in the... Um, vlog um, and if I do I'll be back uh, to tell you that otherwise it'll be goodbye 
Hi folks, hey, it's been about a week since I started this vlog and I kind of forgot where I was going so I'm gonna finish it right here. Our batteries have just about a hundred percent failed and we need, we've got a new battery coming but I need the new power room. We'll get into that in a series that's going to be called The New Power Room and we're gonna do part one, two, and part three. Part one will be the footing and foundation. Part two will be the structure. Part three will be the electronics, then there'll be a part four a month or so after that. These three will come in the next ten days. Part four, a month or so after, will come when I get my second battery and we actually take the system and finish the electronics in here to where it's going to be a 24 volt system. And I'll explain why we're doing 24 instead of 48, because I've said many times jump right to 48. Uh, and it all comes down to money. Uh, um, I've been, I wanted to apologize at the lack of videos we've done lately in terms of um, vlogs or anything. We've been really stressed. We haven't had rain here since November. November of 2019 was the last appreciable rain we've had. We've had a sprinkle or two that didn't give us anything. But we haven't had any rain and we are beyond being critical on water. In fact, if we don't get rain in the next week or so, um, I'll, I will be hauling water 52 mile round trip from Terlingua uh, just for our basic needs. Everything is, is, we're in deep trouble. And somebody might say, well, you know, you've lived there for 10 years, why didn't you do more about it? I did. I did. And that's been a big source of stress for me. And this is the only comment I'm going to make on this, um, this subject right here. I did. I built a dam out there in the Arroyo. I built the dam and had it and it held water. Then over a, two, over a month or so it dried. It didn't hold a lot of water so the water went away like it's going to do. We've had an issue here for the last 11 years, the 11 years I've lived here. This is a county in Texas where it's a closed range county. That means that if you have livestock it's your responsibility to fence that livestock in. If your neighbor says, it's okay, you can run your livestock on my property, great, as long as he's got a fence. If he doesn't have a fence, you're in violation of the state statutes. Now, we've had an issue here for 11 years with a mentally challenged alcoholic owner and his father, but his father's died now, but him allowing his cattle to roam freely all over. Well, it never bothered us before until they ate up all the grass where they lived and started coming over here. I built my dam last May and last May, uh, last June, they breached the dam. Now, when cows walk, they kind of dig their feet in and they weigh 900 pounds and they dig their feet in and they gouge some dirt out. Well, you got 18 or 20 cows walking in single file crossing and breaching my dam. They took my dam, which was already a little low here, they took the low spot and took it lower. We got rain which would have given me water to not have to worry about, but it filled up to the point where they breached and blew the dam out. The fellow that built the dam came back, repaired the dam, this was in August now, and I'll be doggoned if they didn't come back, breach the dam. Now in the meantime, I'm calling the police, I'm calling the, uh, the owner and um, you know, pulling my, what's left of my hair out, and I don't have precious little to pull out. They came and they breached the dam again. The November rain came, which was a four and a half inch rainfall. Sure enough, the dam blew out right where the cows breached it because they had gouged it down about this much. Now I paid a lot of money to get a piece of equipment in here, money I didn't really have. Built the dam all up. We've gotten on top of them. We had an issue. Uh, we've had a couple of issues that have re uh, resulted in some litigation, including criminal charges and a small claims lawsuit against the um, mentally challenged re, uh, alcoholic owner of the animals. They're not here anymore, but that four and a half inches of rain that we would have got in November would have kept us in water all this time. So I did do something. The next step, because I'm pushing 68 years old now, the next step, unfortunately for Debbie and I, we are gonna come into some money in the spring-ish. Um, we're going to have to look into drilling a well. I'm very anti-groundwater, um, but um, I can understand and uh, agree with the fact that older people probably were going to have to look at having um, 
a well to get groundwater up. We just simply can't continue to live. I can't haul the water back and forth. So anyway, that's all I can say on that subject because there is uh, there's the small claims lawsuit pending and a couple of uh, a couple of criminal charges against somebody that uh, threatened to kill me. Um, and uh, a little bit more but um, at any rate I wanted to say that so that's why I've been distracted that's been a lot of stress we've got that stress pretty much behind us the water is a massive stress right now horrible stress I can't tell you enough so that's the last of my complaining about stuff um, and hopefully now everything can be nice and upbeat um, we need a half an inch of rain if we got a half inch rainfall somewhere up from um, near Alpine or somewhere north of us even on top of us a half inch rainfall would solve it all so let's all hope we get a half inch rainfall and I'm going to start on the power room video we're next so I'll say goodbye on this until next time it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center saying see you guys later